Hey guys, it's Vicki, and today I'm here to share with you a standalone book review. And I haven't done a standalone book review here in quite a while, but I recently finished a behemoth of a book and pretty much knew right away that I was going to dedicate a whole video to talking about it. And for those of you that don't have a guess for what it is, you haven't been following my channel, I recently completed The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. This is a 970-something page book, um, and yeah, I have some thoughts about it. So as I said, this book is quite a big, chunky book, and it is a historical fiction um, that is set in England in the 1100s, and it spans a 40-year period where this cathedral is being built in this little village. Um, and that's kind of the basis of the plot. Um, it's kind of the event that is kind of in the background throughout the entire thing, but there are a lot of little subplots going on with the different characters and things like that. But the cathedral is kind of what kind of like ties them all together. I'm going to talk a bit about some of the characters that we meet in this book. Um, one of our main characters is a priest or a prior, whatever you want to call him, and his name is Philip. And he is the one who um, is like the prior of this little church that's in this village and is the one that is really pushing to have this big, beautiful cathedral built because it's kind of um, a goal of his to just work with and have this beautiful church in his community um, because he knows that, especially in this time period, um, to have a big, beautiful church um, in your community was, it was like a, a destination. People would come from very far to see this church and to worship there, and he knew that it would do wonderful things for his community, and so he really, really, really wanted to have it done. And he goes through a lot in the book to make sure that come hell or high water, this church is going to be built. Then we have my favorite character of the book. Her name is Eliana, and she's the son of an earl, the earl of the area where this church is being built. And she goes through such a transformation throughout this book. Um, a lot of hardships for her, a lot of hardships. And she is just so resilient and overcomes them all. Um, and is such a, strong woman and she's so smart and I found myself yeah by the end of the book I was convinced that she was the hero of the story because so many things happened because she stepped up and had ideas and voiced those ideas and just did things to make things happen and yeah she was an amazing character um, very loyal to her family and to her promises that she's made to her family um, and just very like I said just strong um, and badass, basically. And then some other characters that I think should, I should mention before I get into the villains. Um, some of the other characters that I should mention, one being Tom, who was the, um, the mason who starts the building of this big, beautiful cathedral, and his family. He has two children, um, and then he has a lover that, um, comes along with him, and her name is Ellen. She's another female character in this book who was really kind of the brains behind Tom and everything he did. Um, she was very independent and resourceful and did not care what anybody thought of her. And so she, in many ways, was just very inspiring. And then her son, Jack, um, is another character that is kind of part of Tom's family and comes in um, and he was interesting because he was very um, unlike Tom and Tom's son Alfred he is very thoughtful like he he likes to read poetry he likes to um, he's very imaginative um, there's a lot of brain more brain than brawn in Jack and I liked that about him because most of the male characters in here are very brawny um, and because in, the, in that time period, things like reading and writing just weren't overly valued. Um, but Jack was the opposite of that, and he very much valued those kinds of things. Um, so it made him kind of a standout male character, in my opinion. Okay, I gotta put this book down because, like, literally my arm's about to fall off. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about a couple more characters from the book that 
were the villains of the story. Our main villain is William. Um, ugh. And I know when I went into this book, I had, I had listened to a lot of people review this book, and they all said that William was one of the worst villains they had ever encountered in a book. And I thought, okay, let's see about that. But no, he is pretty much the worst. Um, think of like all of the crimes that a human being could commit and he basically does them in one way or another in this book. And so yeah, you pretty much instantly hate him. You instantly want bad things to happen to him and for him to pay for the horrible things he does. Um, at the same time, he does these really horrible things, but then he's so terrified of going to hell for his crimes that he gets like really freaked out and immediately goes to um, a local bishop and wants absolution. Like, please forgive me for these sins. So it's like he does these things knowing they're horrible, knowing that his soul is basically, there's no way he's going to heaven. But he still is like, I have to go, you know, I have to go confess my sins and be forgiven so that I don't go to hell. But it's like, dude, you're going to hell. Like, you're horrible. <laughs> so I always thought, I thought that was kind of interesting about him. Um, and I have to say that that was one thing about the book that I was a little underwhelmed by was William's, um, his, uh, the way his story panned out in the end in the book wasn't as satisfying as I may have wanted it to be. And then another kind of sub-villain of the book is a bitch up, a bitch up, wow, Vicky, a bishop <laughs> named Wellerin by God. And he also is kind of a, um, a thinker in terms of he's always scheming to do things um, because he he wants to come out on top he has his own goals in mind and so he kind of plays mind games and like moves people as like uses people as his little pawns to get things done and one of the people he often targets in the book is Philip for some he has this he has this grudge against Philip and he wants to stop that cathedral from being built because he just cannot have Philip one-up him in any way. And so there's a lot of that going on in the book with Walloran, where by the end you're just like, okay, dude, like, enough with it. Like, enough with the scheming, enough with the, like, let's plot to try to screw over Philip, because it just, it got old, honestly, by the end. I was, like, over it. And then there was one other sort of, I wouldn't, I would guess I would kind of call her a villain, um, because of the females she was definitely like the bad female and that was William's mother I believe her name was Reagan I can't remember what her name was but she was the kind of the same way she was always plotting and like behind the scenes like whispering and in, in William's ear like oh what are we gonna do about this we gotta do something and oh and she's always scheming and everything like that so she was also kind of a villain um she didn't actually do anything I don't think um but she was always like plotting to do things. And so I should also, before I get too much into the, the what I thought were kind of the themes and stuff of the book, um, go into it knowing if you're going to read this book that there is um, a lot of brutality. Um, there's violence um, against humans, against animals. Um, there is rape. There is war. Um, it's it's a pretty brutal book <laughs> so if that's something that is, makes you uncomfortable just go into that knowing that this is a historical fiction book and I think it should go without saying that in the 1100s things were not easy um, people were just I think more um, life was harder so they were more uh, brutal I want to say some of the things that they would do for entertainment would get people arrested nowadays um, in terms of like animal cruelty and so there's things like that that just kind of show you the difference in the time period um, but if you go into it not knowing that it's going to be that way you might be a little bit like put off by the story and put off by the book because like I said it is violent at times it is brutal at times um, there's a lot of death there's a lot of bad things that happen and so you should just know that going in this is not exactly a happy story so then the kind of I would say the kind of main themes of the book for me, um, which I saw mostly within Aliana's story and Philip's story, is the theme of resilience. The theme that like, you get knocked down seven times, you get up eight. Like it's, you never stop um, fighting for yourself and for what you want. 
um, despite these external forces that are coming at you, that you need to be resilient and be faithful to yourself and in what you believe in. I also really liked that, like I said, the I feel the hero of the story was a female, which is interesting because in that time period, um, females were not as valued as highly as men um, in pretty much all facets. They were just there to provide children and to cook and clean, and they were not given really any sort of voice. And I liked that in this book, Ken Follett said, you know what, I'm going to have a character who's a female who does things for herself and provides for herself and finds ways. Actually, there's two females that do that in this book, but Eliana, I think, was the main one in my eyes who really just kind of took all of those, like, preconceived notions about women of the time and was like, no, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my thing and I don't really care about uh, customs and traditions and what, what the men want. I'm going to do things my way. And I just really appreciated that. There was also a lot of like political intrigue in this book, um, especially dealing with the church and the, I guess you could say state. I don't know what it was technically called, kind of the, you know, the monarchy and the church and the influence that the church had during that time period and the ways in which they could control what was going on within these villages and stuff. It was very like eye-opening to, to read about um, a society in which a religious organization had that much power because me being an American growing up I've oh you know I've learned separation of church and state and that's just the way that our, you know, the country that I live in is. And so it's always very interesting to me to see that um, that isn't the way it always is in other countries and in his, throughout history that um, the church did have a lot of power and um, influence and they were very highly regarded. And uh, I found that to be a very interesting thing. And I felt like a lot of times in the book, the church wasn't necessarily the good guys um, because sometimes the things that they wanted didn't coincide with what was going on in the monarchy so they wanted to kind of do things that weren't you know necessarily viewed as um, things that I think God would uh, give the okay to but they did them um, to further their own agendas so it was interesting and I really liked that aspect despite not being a religious person myself, um, I don't really get into any of that at all. Um, and normally those kinds of things turn me off, but I thought that um, it was well done in this book. Okay, I'm picking the book back up. I have given my arms a rest. <laughs> so overall, I would say that this book, um, I gave it a four star. Uh, I thought that it was a very epic story that went over many years, and I learned a lot about the time period. Um, a lot about architecture, believe it or not. I didn't think I would learn that much about it or be that interested in it, um, but I learned a lot about that. And I thought that despite its brutality and its violence, it was a good book. Um, it wasn't quite a five star for me, mainly because it just didn't give me that like five star feeling where when I finished it, I was like, oh wow, like that was amazing. I was more kind of like, well, it was good, but I'm kind of glad it's over. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would say if you like historical fiction, especially like old school historical fiction, and you want like a big chunky book to just dive into and to dive into that history, dive into that world, this is definitely going to be the book for you. Now, what I am I going to continue with the series? There are three books in this series and they are all pretty long. I'm not sure yet. I'm still on the fence about whether I want to read the other two books. Um, because I just don't know if I want to dive back in to that world just yet. I understand that the, um, the subsequent books take place like hundreds of years later than this one, but I still, I still just don't know if it's, if it's for me and if it's a, something I want to continue with. All right, guys, so that is my review of The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. Please let me know down below if you've read this book, what you thought about it, um, you know, did you read the sequels? What did you think of those? But anyways, that is all I have for today, guys. I hope that you're having a wonderful week, and I will talk with you very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.